This is Rio de Janeiro, an iconic city known for its beautiful people, sandy beaches and sunny happiness. But it's also known for its dark side. With next level wealth inequality, rich and poor are living side by side. Robberies, theft, assault and even murder is part of everyday life. Stay away or you'll likely be robbed or even worse. That's what we were told. So we asked ourselves, does reality really match these expectations? We took a 12-hour plane from Portugal to find out. What's up, my boys? Welcome to Rio de Janeiro. So we are not alone here. We're actually here with Giovanni and Andrea. The cool thing is that Andrea and Giovanni are basically locals. Even though Andrea is from Romania and Giovanni is from Belgium. Belgium. But they have lived here and they know this city very, very well. Yeah. This is Giovanni. He's not a fan of being on camera. He's a bit like Toby from The Office. Just take it. And this beauty is Andrea, Giovanni's better half. She's not as shy, but it's also her first time as a YouTuber. Why? <laughs> why, did, why did you insist on inviting us to Brazil when you're not a fan of being on camera? First, to set the record straight, you guys invited yourself after we knew each other for about, what, two, two weeks, nights? Two weeks. You're not as, as afraid of cameras as he is. Yes, I am. He loves being on camera. You are a human Wikipedia when it comes to Brazil, and that's basically why we decided to come with you, right? You know and everything we are about amazing people to hang out with, but yes, I do. <laughs> I lived in Brazil for many years and many times I've been here as well. And you even lived in a favela. I did. Before we carry on with this Rio exploration, we are happy to announce the sponsor of this video, WISE. WISE, formerly known as TransferWISE, is designed to make life easier for digital nomads, expats, international travelers, businesses, and students abroad. That allows for up to eight times cheaper transfers than your regular bank. And up to three times cheaper than PayPal. So let's say you're an American living in Europe and your employer is paying you in US dollars. You simply convert your US dollars into euros by using WISE and that's much cheaper compared to using your regular bank. And we have traveled a lot converting especially Danish kronos into US dollars, euros, Australian dollars, South African rands, and even Indonesian rupiah. Right when we moved to Portugal, we also made large deposits on Oops. our new car and rental apartment. We saved over 1200 euros by converting Danish kronos into euros via WISE. The cool thing is that WISE also allows you to hold 50 plus currencies so you can instantly quick swap. This has been convenient for us here in Brazil as we needed to swap some euros for Brazilian reais in order to make some large payments. WISE also offers a multi-currency debit card for shopping online, traveling and spending abroad. Use our link to save money on your first international transfer. The first transfer up to 600 euros is free. Click the link below in the description or in the top comment and then let's get back to Rio. Hello! Hello! This is Ipanema Beach. Yes, it is. And every Sunday, they just close down the road. And then it's like almost like they have a walkathon here. <laughs> Cheers in breakfast, Caipirinha. So after a mandatory breakfast, Caipirinha, we went to the Havaiana store. Why? Because there is a certain Rio dress code that must be followed. As a tourist, you shouldn't stick out like a sore thumb with Italian shoes, fancy watch. Instead, you simply wear Havaianas, shorts and a basic t-shirt. This will decrease the chance of being singled out by thieves and what could be worse. So of course we surrendered, even though you normally wouldn't be caught dead with flip-flops. Are you dress code ready? As, as, um, one step closer, you know. But you couldn't find any uh, Havaianas or what? No, oh, because I have those stupid ballet feet. We can't use this one because it looks too corporate and professional. No go. This is what you want. And I wouldn't be seen carrying this around in a million years, but I do it for the safety. And also yesterday, upon arrival, I bought a Seiko t-shirt. And in case you don't know Seiko, he's one of the greatest football players of all time. He was often referred to as the White Pelé. We were extremely privileged to visit Seiko's house as our good friend, Agent Huffman, 
put us in touch with Zico's son, Junior, who has a successful podcast where he interviews people like Mike Tyson and Jermaine Jackson. Junior told us some very interesting stories about his father, but also what it was like growing up as the son to such a big star. People would invite me to go to a pickup game, and then I would go there, people, they wouldn't tell anybody who I was. So I go there, score one, two goals. Oh my God, this kid's good. Oh, no, who is it? He's the son of Zico. Automatically, two minutes later, I sucked. I will say you're one step closer, but you're not quite there yet. What do you mean? Or something, I think it's the shorts. Giovanni said the shorts was fine. They are perfect, beautiful. So what do we think of Rio so far, Amelia? I love it. I, uh, also, I've missed being in a big city. Yeah. You know? And this is, this is, this has the essence of a big city. All the nice restaurants and bars and the light. This is uh, Rio's answer to the Flatiron building on Manhattan. What do you think about Ipanema? Why, like, you insisted that we live here? It's the best area to be. I think it's the most animated area if you are a tourist or if you, even if you live in Brazil. You have the beach, you have the lakes, you have nature. A lot of bars, a lot of restaurants. It's safe. I think it's really the best place to be, to be honest. Okay. Coco. Coco uh, coconut. 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 It's coconut. Coconut. There's a hair in it. Ask for another one. Uh. So as we were slowly moving along the beach from Ipanema to Copacabana, we realized that we were actually here. This is what we came for. Rio. A city that the Western world loves to brand as dark and gloomy. However, our immediate impression was quite the opposite. As far as the eye could see, there were happy people playing, drinking, tanning, swimming and basically just enjoying life. It reminded us of a more tropical and less pretentious version of the French Riviera. The beach culture in Rio is simply unbelievable. You can sit in your beach chair the entire day without moving and still be served food, beer and caipadinhas by the many beach vendors. It was fantastic to see the entrepreneurship of these people. Most of them live in favelas and are 100% dependent on this income to feed their families. Anyway, we felt safe already. This might as well be somewhere in Europe. One thing we were told by our tour guides is that beer are always much colder here and so far, yeah, I agree. When we were greeted in the airport yesterday, we bought a Corona that was so cold that it was almost frozen. This is a shout out to all the restaurant owners and bar owners. Put your uh, beer glasses in the freezer. I got a brain freeze while you were talking about it. That is so far the prettiest building we've seen here in Rio. So we're saying goodbye to Copacabana here and entering Leme. Leme. I think one thing that I've that we've really noticed the architecture here is, uh, well, a mixed bag, so to say, diplomatically. There are so many old buildings here from like the 50s, 60s, 70s. Obviously, it's diluted by the nature, the beaches, the people and everything. I actually don't mind it so much. It adds to, it just brings a different atmosphere. I think in some way it has its charm and it fits with, with the... Um, age of the city let's say if you just make a picture you have to take the whole picture right so you take the beach side you take the road you take the mountains and then you take the buildings there is a matching element in there and you have to keep in mind it's an old part of the city right so they and they can't just tear down a building because people live here we're going up there so not only did our two tour guides demand us to wear Havaianas for safety purposes they also demanded us to walk until our feet started bleeding. Do you actually have stock in Havaianas? I do. But quickly we forgot about our poor feet. What you mean, boy? These are known as the common mammoset. You'll find them in trees and forests all around Rio, but also throughout most of Brazil. We tried to steal one, but realized that our toy poodle Lara wouldn't be a fan of the new company. The walk to the top of Fort Leme felt long, but took less than 20 minutes. We didn't spend time looking into the history of this fort. Instead, we admired the stunning views to the legendary Copacabana Beach, where you once again get to appreciate the life-affirming beach culture of Rio. We could also see the favela of Babylon. That's where Giovanni used to live, and that was our next stop. 
We've always heard a lot of bad things about favelas, so we were a little bit nervous about going there. You can't just film streets and people, so we didn't get much footage. But our primary goal were to eat lunch at Bar du David, a little favela restaurant with amazing food. The fridges here are at zero degrees. Cheers. Certainly uh, deserve. Cheers. Cheers. Caiparinha time! So Amelia, it's your first time, our first time ever in a favela. Yes, How in a community, is what we community. should call it, yeah. And I love it. I actually just said to Andrea, this is like the most cozy place we have been on this trip. It's like, there is this little, it seems homey. Could you like give just a very brief story of how you ended up living in a favela as a white Belgian man? It's a long story, but a very, very short version is that I um, I was pretty successful in life. I lived in a very nice place in Rio de Janeiro, but then my business partners, let's say, were not that correct with me. So I ended up without money and I had to make a decision going home back to Belgium or staying in Brazil. I was too proud to go back. So long story short is I ended up here in the community. Despite the general uh, knowledge that everybody has from the media, uh, I fell in love with the city and uh, we have been coming back here uh, every year since 2015. In 2015 we actually had the pleasure of living here for five months. Oh, so you live here? In Brazil. I mean, in, uh, in Ipanema, Brazil. not in uh, Yes, but not in this, not in this community, but in uh, Ipanema. And uh, I love it. So you guys are kind of warming up to moving back here? Yes, I would move back immediately. David, who is the chef here, he has actually been participating in different um, competitions around Brazil, where he has won some uh, prizes for these dishes that we are having today. Right behind me you can see his wall of diplomas. This is a famous chef in a favela. This is one of the award-winning dishes that he has. It's a cornbread made with cheese and then inside you have this dried shredded meat that is very typical here in Brazil. And um, supposedly this is the star of the show. Oh. <laughs> That's the real star. So I tell to all my friends, everyone that comes here, you have your own. Don't touch my ribs. They are delicious, especially with that pineapple sauce. Cheers. Some good food, son. I'm really happy with this, son. You know, Giovanni, he has been, every time he's been talking about Brazil, and that has been every time I've seen him, everything Brazil is associated with amazing, and I've been teasing him about it. But already today I realized that I have said amazing myself a couple of times. For example, these ribs here are the, some of the, probably the best ribs I've ever had. And this morning, the Egg Benedict was also the best I've ever had. So, so far the amazing makes sense. Obrigado. Até logo. From Babylonia, we took a taxi all the way back to where we started and where we live, Ipanema. Based on the grand tour of these Rio hotspots, there's no doubt that this is where it snows. Even armed with our camera gear, we were increasingly relaxed and less on the toes. With less than 24 hours in Rio de Janeiro, we felt at home. Watching the sun going down along with perhaps the most beautiful backdrop on the planet was a true bucket list experience. Rio is not a bad place at all. Obrigado. Cheers for an amazing, first, amazing first day in, in Rio. I am surprised how calm I am in the areas here. I am not really that afraid of walking here and I'm in love with the place. I thought it would take me some time, but immediately once we started walking today, I was like, this place is perfect. Rio is a fascinating city and it's a melting pot of so many different people. And the fact that this is the 19th biggest city in the world, which is the biggest city we've ever been in, gives us a completely different atmosphere and feel that we've never experienced before. And of course, we've put in maybe too much focus on safety and all that uh, uh, jazz today. But this is also what everybody talks about before you go there. So this is our first day in Rio, our first time in Rio. I'm in love and everybody should be. I mean, look around. I'm not talking about the one who's blocking our uh, sunset. <laughs> when you came to, to Brazil first time, what was your idea of it? Me personally, I didn't like it. I didn't want to be here. 
I was a very different person than now. But then, I took about a week, I loved it. I came coming back, I lived in a community, I didn't want to leave. It's just an amazing place. I was scared to come, but I loved it. So do you think that there is like a general stigma when it comes to what everybody says? I think, and I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure because I met a lot of foreigners that came to Rio, were very afraid to go out and then realized after a few days how actually nice it is and pretty safe it is as long as you use common sense, like in any big city in the world, like Paris, London as well. I think most people that comment and comment negatively never been to Rio. Second part is that a lot of people take information from telenovelas or the news. Yes, bad things happen, but you have to just be a little bit street smart and don't go to the areas where no tourist should ever go in the first place. If, I, if you do that, it's an amazing city. Most of the crime that happens here is not directed towards tourists. It's crime that is around drug use, drug trafficking, uh, arms and things like that. So I think that if it would be so dangerous as people picture it, there would be no foreign tourism here. Now we've seen everything on the surface. In the next videos we are going to dive deeper into what is Rio, what is Brazil. Obrigada por ver o vídeo. Até logo. Até logo. How do you say goodbye in Belgium? Tot following the kid. See you guys. And uh, she's still, you know, a sunset. You didn't give, you didn't film anything for the women. Film some of the men. Okay, there you go, Amelia. I think that's for men as well, actually. <laughs>